Hey our folks, it's time for another Animal Artist Collective. If you don't know what the AAC is, it's the Animal Artist Collective, which was set up by Denise from In Liquid Color and Jennifer from Jennifer Charlie Art. And the point was to advocate for animals and bring artists together. And 50% of the proceeds will go to charities. In my case, this piece will support the Save the Devil Fund. The theme this time was Temperate Forests, and I chose the Tasmanian Devil. I ended up using my calligraphy nibs a lot this time because I used a lot of calligraphy and I had so much fun doing that. I wanted to do something a little different this time. I've been having a lot of fun trying different things that I normally wouldn't do for the AAC pieces. And this time I kind of wanted to replicate a sort of nature journal, something that a scientist or an illustrator would do upon seeing a specimen in the wild, but obviously not quite. And to give it a bit of an old, tiny feel. And to get a bit of part of what gave it this old tiny feel is using this iron gall ink in the shade of Bistel, which is sort of like sepia. It's a very traditional color in Germany. And doing the calligraphy with my Basa rose nib and my Leonard quill nib for the smaller text. I have different observations about the Tasmanian Devil written alongside the illustrations. So for example here I have habitat is dry or mixed sclerophyll forests and coasts. Actually the Tasmanian Devil lives all over Tasmania including in the wet forests but their favorite place to live is in the dry or mixed sclerophyll forests. They are endangered and their main threats are cars. There have been a lot of Tasmanian devil killed by road accidents, but 60% of the Tasmanian devil population has plummeted due to devil facial tumor disease. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So I also did line art for my illustrations, which is really unusual for me. I really enjoyed adding in this eucalyptus here. Eucalyptus are such strange plants. <laughs> and they have such interesting forms. This here is a eucalyptus tenui ramus. I was trying to find a type of eucalyptus that is common where Tasmanian devils are found. It was really great to get all of the furry details with the crow quill. I chose a relatively sturdy one with still a little bit of give, so you got that line variation, but it wasn't totally uncontrollable. In this pose, I have the Tasmanian Devil with its mouth open because I thought it was so crazy. The Tasmanian Devil can bite down with a force of over 500 newtons, that's over 100 pounds. They can bite through bone and metal. They can open their jaw 
over 80 degrees. For such a tiny animal, they really have a huge bite. So here's all of the inking. I really loved how his little face turned out and the jaw next to the other illustration. Next, I'm going to do some shading in ink. And I took the same ink I did the line art with and just diluted some of it more and some of it less. And I used that for the shading. I'm basically painting with it like I would with watercolor. Since ink dries much quicker than watercolor, I had to move pretty quickly to make sure that I didn't get a bunch of hard edges, but it worked out pretty well on this paper. The interesting thing is the Tasmanian devil used to actually live in Australia, but by the time the British settlers arrived in Australia, they were already linked in Australia and only found in Tasmania. So now I'm painting the main Tasmanian devil figure and I'm doing this one in full color. So while I'm doing that, I'll talk a little bit about the Tasmanian devil. Why did I choose the Tasmanian Devil? Well, to be honest, this is literally kind of fan art. When I was a little girl, I really loved Taz from Looney Tunes. And I remember looking up what actual Tasmanian Devils looked like and thinking it had absolutely nothing to do with Taz from the Looney Tunes. They didn't spin in circles. But they did make weird noises and that's part of the reason why they have this new Tasmanian devil besides that they can eat really large animals for their size and they can consume carcasses whole which is kind of frightening but actually great for farmers because then they don't have rotting animal parts around their farms which is much more hygienic but this was really scary to people. And they also fight one another and make very strange, kind of frightening howling noises. People were very worried that they would attack their sheep. And this is one of the reasons why there was a bounty put on their head and people were killing them. While that was not great for the population. Currently, the biggest threat to the Tasmanian devil, like I said, is the devil facial tumor disease, which is both very sad and very interesting because it's killed so much of the devil population, but at the same time, it's really advanced human research because this was the first example of a communicable cancer. Of course, there are many different factors that have led to our changing understanding of cancer as a disease. But this is one of the ones that kind of changed the way that we thought about it. Before, it was really considered that cancer was kind of a random thing and that it couldn't be caused by something like the virus or physical transmission. 
And in the case of these devils, this cancer is actually transmitted between them by biting each other in the face, which is how they fight with one another. So it's very common and it can get so terrible on their mouths that they are unable to eat anymore. So scientists have been able to do a lot of research into understanding how a cancer like this can function. And hopefully that research can not only help the Tasmanian devil in the future, but also help us. But back to the fine art. The Tasmanian devil is the thing that is most known about Tasmania. And, and it's because of the Tasmanian devil that I got to learn about the Tasmanian wolf which is extinct. This was a character who was very anxious and neurotic in the show. And I think this was really my first exposure to feeling really sad that there was an animal that I could never see or experience and was just no longer with us. The Tasmanian devil is the Tasmanian wolf's closest relative. And since the extinction of the Tasmanian wolf, it is also the largest carnivorous land mammal. There is a campaign at the moment to save the Tasmanian devil, and I can't imagine how sad the younger version of me would be if somehow we weren't able to save the Tasmanian devil and it went extinct just like the Tasmanian wolf. It was a lot of fun working with ink and nib to create the detail in this piece. I haven't worked like this in a long time, and I guess I could say that it is practice for Inktober. I love the idea of having sort of record of meeting this little guy and hopefully not coming into an altercation. He might look scary, but I don't think he's that scary. Just don't let him bite you. Look at that face. That face wouldn't bite you, right? In the end, I think I was able to achieve that old school vibe, and I hope that you learned a little bit about the Tasmanian Devil. As I said before, this piece will be available for sale. The link is in the description below, and 50% of the proceeds will be going to save the Tasmanian Devil. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons for sticking with me. See you guys next time, and until then, be gentle with yourself. Bye!